My name is Rebecca Cooper, and this is the Lower Ninth Ward Living Museum. The Lower Ninth Ward Living Museum has been open for almost two years now. Um, we are a museum that doubles as a community space for local kids and community members. We have kids programming every day after school. In the past four or five years, we've had a team of volunteers from different academic institutions that have um, helped us collect oral histories from different local residents. Um, so we have almost 60 oral histories from Lower Ninth Ward residents that help tell the story of the Lower Ninth Ward as you walk through the museum in chronological order. Um, and the idea is that the oral histories themselves help to sculpt the exhibits that are on the wall and tell the stories um, according to the way that the people who've lived here understand them. One of the myths is that this neighborhood uh, w is just, you know, was a bad neighborhood. It doesn't have a rich history, but it's actually the opposite. Prior to Katrina, the Lower Ninth Ward had the highest rates of black home ownership. Um, and this neighborhood has a rich cultural history dating back to its origins as an escaped slave colony, um, all the way through desegregation and Betsy um, till today, and a strong, strong history of community activism. Um, and so when you have a community like this where the history is just erased, um, all of these myths kind of take over and people have ideas of what the Lower Ninth was and what it is today that are just not true. A lot of people think that New Orleans is completely back from Katrina um, and they don't know about how bad it still is in the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, down here in this neighborhood, we have one in five residents or one in five families have been able to return home, which is, you know, 20 percent return rate is pretty awful. And there's also no infrastructure. We have no grocery stores or banks. Um, we have one school out of seven prior to Katrina that has been able to come back almost two. We just got our first fire um, firehouse nine years later um, and so even when residents are able to come back there's no infrastructure around here and oftentimes their house is the only one on the street that has that is being lived in. It's been made known to residents of the Lower Ninth Ward that this neighborhood isn't going to come back the way it ever was before and that this community um, is, ha is not welcome home. And as gentrification sort of creeps down the Ninth Ward into the Lower Ninth Ward and you see um, new families living here and new buildings that, are, that have solar panels and, and don't fit the original aesthetic of the neighborhood, it's clear that the Lower Ninth Ward will come back, but it will be completely different than it ever was before. And so something that's really important to us at the Living Museum is to s put our foot down and say you, you cannot actually erase the collective memory and the history of this neighborhood. One of our uh, secondary goals is to redirect some of the disaster tourism in the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, we have a lot, a lot, you know, New Orleans is a tourist industry. There are a lot of people that come to New Orleans every year and some of those people really do want to see the Lower Ninth Ward and understand what happened. Um, but unfortunately they choose to to take tour, to pay tour tour buses um, and go on guided tours that come down through the neighborhood in a voyeur voyeuristic style and leave with the money. Um, and the people who start with good intentions never actually get to hear the real history of the Lower Ninth Ward. With a long history of being exploited by people who look like me, uh, being a white outsider doing activism work down here means that we have a lot of conversations about our role in gentrification and how we perpetuate racism in the in a historically black community that we're um, that we intend to serve. We are really lucky to have an incredible board of directors made up of local activists and local residents um, that help us with visioning and funding and putting together the museum over the course of the last two years. Um, first, Malik Rahim, who is a Black Panther um, from New Orleans. Who, he is an incredible person and an incredible powerhouse in the history of New Orleans activism, in, especially in Black communities. He also is the founder of Common Ground um, and has dedicated a lot of his life, life and career to rebuilding the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, we also, on our board, are lucky to have Miss Leona Tate, who is one of the three little girls who um, desegregated McDonough 19 in, um, in New Orleans in the Lower Ninth Ward. And now she runs her organization helping with education in New Orleans. And she sits on our board and helps us too. Um, 
And we also are lucky to have Mr. Robert Green on our board. He is a local resident. Um, he lives in a Make It Right house and works very closely with uh, Brad Pitt's Make It Right organization. And he's sort of, um, I don't know if he would call himself this, but I, we sort of see him as an unofficial mayor of the Lower Ninth Ward, and he's been wonderful. The exhibits begin here. They go in chronological order. This is a map of the Lower Ninth Ward, um, and over here you can see how the Lower Ninth Ward is constantly left out of tour maps in, the, in New Orleans. Um, it ends, the tour maps end right before um, the Lower Ninth Ward begins, and so it sort of sets up the rest of the museum um, to show a community that is constantly neglected and left out. Um, so the history begins here with uh, in 1917, when the Lower Ninth Ward began as a maroon colony for escaped slaves. Moving into this room, we're looking more at the 1800s, the history of the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, here, this image is pretty iconic from the 1927 Mississippi flood, where the government um, blew up the levees and um, sacrificed the Lower Ninth Ward to save other parts of New Orleans. Um, a pretty horrifying picture. Um, especially in the context of Hurricane Betsy and Katrina, where people believe that the same thing occurred. Um, over here we have the history of social aid and pleasure clubs in the Lower Ninth Ward, um, which is essentially Lower Ninth Ward residents pooling together income um, as an insurance to help each other out when the powers, the political powers that be um, have neglected once again this community. This room is moving into the 20th century. Um, most importantly, we have Miss Leona Tate, who's on our board. This exhibit is on desegregation in the Lower Ninth Ward when Leona Tate and two other first grade girls desegregated McDonough 19. Um, and we also have 1965 Hurricane Betsy, um, which also flooded the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, some of these really, really powerful pictures of um, people on boats on the Claiborne Bridge that really perfectly mirror the images that we see from Katrina. Um, and these walls on this side of the museum and over here is all um, notable figures from the Lower Ninth Ward, famous um, musicians that have come from the Lower Ninth Ward, Fats Domino, Mahalia Jackson, um, you have the Lasty family. Um, and over behind me right here are presidential visits to the Lower Ninth Ward. So you can see um, our partner, uh, Mr. Mac McClendon, who passed away this last year, standing with Jimmy Carter, um, and when President Obama visited the Martin Luther King Charter School in the Lower Ninth Ward. This room is dedicated to um, Hurricane Katrina and the levee failure and the devastation that that caused. Um, it begins here explaining how Hurricane Katrina was a human-made disaster and not a natural disaster, um, and goes into detail about uh, the government's decisions to put profit over people again and again over the last couple hundred years um, that led to this being such a such a such a catastrophic disaster. Over here we have during the storm the bungled evacuation, also the racism in the media coverage. Right after the storm, the direct aftermath, we have a lot of um, NOPD shootings and uh, white vigilantes who took up in Algiers um, to protect their property from looters, which essentially gave them um, allowed them to shoot and kill black New Orleans residents um, and, and get away with it um, in, the, in the direct aftermath of the storm. So we go into detail about how Katrina's effects are lingering. Um, we have the closure of public housing, education, um, the social service cuts, um, and the idea that residents here are not welcome back and this, the systemic obstacles that have been put in place that have made it really impossible for Lower Ninth residents to come back and rebuild. Um, and then moving on to the next room, we have a beautiful photo exhibit by um, Ryan Brandenburg. Um, this is all from nine months after Hurricane Katrina in the Lower Ninth Ward. And then on this wall we have from 2008 to 2009. And so the photo exhibit begins here and details some really heartbreaking images from Hurricane Katrina. This last room is the Rebirth and Remembrance Room, and it finishes up the photo exhibit by Ryan Brandenburg called Roots Run Deep Here, profiling some of some important figures in the Lower Ninth Ward and telling their stories of um, Hurricane Katrina and the levee failure and um, how that's affected them to this day. Um, some important 
stories like Ronald Lewis, who is the curator and founder of House and Dance, Dance and Feathers, as well as Malik Rahim, who is on our board, um, and Mr. Robert Green, who is also on our board. Um, and the other part of the Rebirth and Remembrance Room is that we have a station where visitors can write down their messages and contribute um, their comments to the museum, again, adding to the idea that it's living and, and continually changing and growing. Um, so as people, as visitors write down their, their messages on the board, we put them up on the wall. So they're made up of tourists, but also local residents who come through. Um, and yeah, we have a lot we have to still put up. Um, and lastly, this is just, this small little exhibit just um, details some of, the, some of the Lower Ninth Ward organizations that have been really pivotal, pivotal in the last 10 years um, in Lower Ninth Ward activism. Um, we have Common Ground, the Lower Ninth Ward um, Village, which was founded by Mac McClendon, who passed away last year, um, Make It Right by Brad Pitts. Um, organization, the L9 Center for the Arts is an art gallery in the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, our school at Blair Grocery is still, still exists and does farming in the Lower Ninth Ward as well. So all of these organizations are um, really important to the story of the Lower Ninth Ward in the last few years. One of the things that's really important to us is that we stay here and that the stories stay here and they don't leave. There's a term called parachuting that's often used in the academic world of oral history where oral historians will come into a neighborhood post-disaster oftentimes, um, record oral histories and then leave with them. And so we want to make it clear that our very first and primary goal is to preserve the history for local residents. In addition to being a museum, we also double as a community space. And so something that's really important for us is the kids programming that happens here. So the private donations that we get go towards funding activities um, like arts and crafts club for the kids and poetry club for the kids. Um, also, every day after school, we have tutoring in here. And so it's really great to see kids running in and out. But the reality is that there are a bunch of kids growing up in a neighborhood with no infrastructure um, because of the school system being so privatized and um, and dispersed across New Orleans, they're taking, they all go to different schools and they take buses across New Orleans to go to school. And so this really serves as a hub and a place for them to come together and, and learn about their own history through the voices of their elders and also um, come together as a community of youth. If you want to learn more, check us out at our website, which is www.l9livingmuseum.org. Um, and on there you can find a link to donate, which would go to kids programming at the museum and helping to expand our oral history collection. Um, and by all means, come through if you're ever in New Orleans. We're open every day except for Monday from noon to five and admission is always free. Thank you Project Unity for coming and checking out the Lower Ninth Living Museum and giving us a platform to share what we love with people around the world.